evening, good night, or whichever it is for you. It might be good morning if you're from the U.S. Well, it doesn't matter. We're all here to watch a game of Dota 2, and we see a game of Dota 2. This game is going to be between Garage Gaming on the Dire side and CNB Esports on the Radiant side. And this game is a game for 4PL Cup, 4PL Cup number 10. And uh, we have a lot of teams joining today for the cup, uh, but we're almost there. This is the semi-finals. The other semi-finals were just won by Quantic, so they already secured a spot in the finals. And one of these two teams will face up against them to take home the winner takes it all prize of 400 euros. And uh, it looks like we might have to uh, do a reload. There is a lot of casters in this. There is a lot of observers in this, and it looks like we might have to reload once again. Oh, never mind. We don't. We don't. We're in. We're in. So. In case you're wondering, you just saw the names loading in and you think, hey, I know those names. They're not in Garage Gaming. You're right, because on the dire side, it is uh, Garage Gaming, which is actually only Balas from Garage Gaming, which you see is not even a captain there. Uh, the other four are friends he has to play for him. It is uh, the Cool Story Bear, which is actually Kebab. It is a little cute mean kitty, which is actually a horse. We have Dandy playing under his uh, own name. And NS playing under his own name as well. So a lot of uh, people there playing that are normally uh, not in there, not in garage gaming. Yeah. But so far they've been doing good and we instantly see C and V knowing who they're up against. They better have to punch. We've seen Danny Punch play before. And if you're wondering who is C and V and how do they get into the semi-finals, well I don't even know them because they beat some known teams to get here. Uh, just beat Z Nation as well in their previous game. But uh, CNB is a Brazilian Dota 2 team. And I say Dota 2, but they recently were still Dota 1. They only recently swapped to Dota 2. And in Dota 1 they have a long history of playing. So that is why they come in here in the Dota 2 scene and instantly uh, make it to the semi-finals of this 4PL Cup. And uh, we look at the draft so far, we see Rubik ban out, Pudge ban out as well, the Naga Simon. First pick will be the Lyca throw for CNB. The ban outs for Garage Gaming were the Brewmaster, the Lashrak, and the Nature's Prophet. And Chargers will be picked up by Garage, the same as the Darkseer. As, as, you know, not really surprising, if the Darkseer is still in, then you got to pick him up. Unless, of course, there's a Lycanthrope, in which case you rather want the Lycanthrope in, at least. That is the case for CNB. And let's see uh, what they're going to complement it with. Are they going to pick up the Enigma? Well, I, I normally would say Enigma wants to be picked up by the team that has the, dra the Darkseer, but uh, since the Jadavis is already there, there's already a jungle hero there. If they want to pick up the Enigma there, then they would have to have her, or sorry, him, uh, on the lane, which is, of course, not bad. But it might not be really ideal. So they pick up an Invoker, solid mid lane, or solo lane, I should say, regardless. And uh, let's see what the last pickup here is. Or if they just want to pick up heroes so they don't give it to Dendi. I mean, there's a couple of signature heroes already banned out. If you see a Tinker now, we know why it is. They don't want to give uh, that one to Garage Gaming. No, continue calling them Garage Gaming. Even though I might mistake myself a couple of times. But I will, d I will try. I will try. And um, also, it is fairly... Well, it is not really late. I mean, it's 10 pa 20 past 11, which is not really late. But I've been casting for a long time, so I do apologize if it makes mistakes because of that. So, that just so you're aware of that. But, we'll see. So far, so good, right? Uh, last pickup. They're going into a long for that bonus time. Only 30 seconds left. Do they want to go? I, I would say tight on purely because I'd like to see some team fight. And I don't need to pick up Enigma anymore because I don't think that... Uh, Dire side wants to pick that one up. Maybe they want to see the Morphling or, you know, Morphling Antimate still on the pool. If they don't pick up one of the two, will they have the risk of, or they will have the risk of uh, having w one of the two, well, Dire being picked team. up now by Garage Gaming and the other one being banned out, possibly. So, is it going to be a Morphling? I mean, they only have 12 seconds left into their bonus time up on CNB. And they picked a Windrunner, so so far, I mean, Windrunner, solo lane, Invoker, solo lane, so they just need a dual lane if they want to have Lycanthrope in the jungle. But, taking so long about a Windrunner, it is a very safe pick, I mean, I don't blame them for going for the safe road. Even though if a Morphling gets picked up now, I mean, we saw a Vorse Morphling today, already. And it is, um, wow. It is a Templar Assassin instead. We saw Templar Assassins today. Templar Assassin has been quite popular. 
And quite successful as well, if I might add. Oh. And there goes the Antimage being banned out. We might see a Morphling banned out as well. First back. pick will, of course, go to C and B. They could still go for dueling with the Morphling there. Uh, unless, of course, the Morphling is going to get banned out. The Morphling has a lot of supports to be able to... Uh, su to uh, actually, Morphling gets banned out. Never mind. N not going to say anything more about that one. They already have a Lycanthrope, of course, so they can't go... Um, to just forget about those hard carries. Uh, for dual lays, though, with dual lays, it would still have in. I mean, the Shrek is out, but there's still a lot of dual lays out there that could com com be combined with, uh, for example, a CK or maybe a Brewmaster. Just those heroes that can, like last game, can divert the attention of the le Lycanthropes that are like and can farm slash push. Uh, for the people in the chat, this is a best out of one game. The only best out of three game is for the finals. And the finals are not yet uh, here. The finals are going to be between Quantic and the winner of this match. Might happen only on Tuesday. Might happen today. Still, we'll find out after this match is... And someone is just linking my newly come up with text that I have on uh, Team Liquid. Oh my god, Team Liquid works. Thank you for that one. Anyway... Uh, we have a Tidehunter, finally. I was saying Tidehunter earlier. Good team fight. And have something against the Darkseer. I mean, Darkseer has a good team fight on itself, of course. And, uh, well, like I said, you want something to take their attention off the Lycanthrope. Forcing out team fights is one of those possibilities. An Invoker, Windrunner. They just need something extra to complement that with. Ten seconds remaining. Hmm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking a range if it's gonna be with a tight under the lane. Maybe Dragonite. I know he's not a range, but he has a ult that has a range. Perhaps. Maybe something weird like a Viper. I mean, it's not really. So I I don't expect to see a Viper, but you know. Lena. Oh, there goes the Chaos Knight for the Lena's Dire team. And I say Chaos Knight because it's Lena, and Lena is is usually bound up uh, with the Chaos Knight together. Unless C and B thinks, you know what, we'll take the kills they instead, but they don't really have the lineup for that. But they could, they could. They just do throw some uh some some dirt in the face of garage gaming. But let's see if they actually want to go for that. What could be a strong duel lane with a tide hunter? There's a lot that could be a strong duel lane with a tide hunter, to be fair. Ten seconds remaining. Ten seconds remaining. Then they don't have that many bonus time left, and actually they didn't need anything after using that much up on their last uh Bam. Shadow Shaman. So if you're talking about team fights being forced out while the Lycanthrope is farming, team fights and pushing power, Shadow Shaman is a good hero for that. Of course he's quite squishy. A temporary system will kill him off very fast if she gets a chance. But Yeah, I, I can't agree I can't accept this pickup. I can't accept this pickup. Man stands ready. No K no CK? Did I did I miss seeing the CK band? No I didn't. But still, if you're comparing the CK to his fan, one thing that they have in common is that guaranteed stun. And of course, that is why the CK is such a good combination with Lina. The guaranteed stun to follow up with Lina's stun. Sven and Lina can do the same thing. Sven stun, Lina stun. Now, we don't see Sven that often, so I guess uh, lucky us, right? Seeing him in action uh, by Garage Gaming. We've seen Garage Gaming being very convincing, uh, or playing very convincing earlier uh, today. <laughs> no surprise. Uh, with uh, the lineup that they have right there, but we're gonna see C and B. I have to admit, I have not seen them before. Uh, the information that I got on that it's a Brazilian team and that they used to be big on Dota One is uh, information that I got later on, uh, later on from someone else. And um, I am very interested to see them play, see how they do, because obviously they are in the semifinals for a reason, and I'm. I'm yeah. I'm hoping, like you, are curious to see this uh, maybe rising star. Who knows? Who knows where else we're gonna see them? So let's see who's playing what first. We have a pause coming off from the dire team, but uh, that doesn't matter. Maybe they're discussing strategies. Probably not. But then again, who knows? Let's see who's playing what. Uh, from Garage Gaming on the dire side, we have Balas. And that's actually the only one from Garage Gaming. The rest is Stan is Cool Story Bear is Kebab. He will be playing the Enchanters, which is his signature hero. Note that it will be Dandy on the Templar Assassin. Rejoice, people. Dandy Templar Assassin. I know you like that. I know you like to see him in action and making big plays Prepare with that. Little cute mean kitty is a voice playing the Darkseer up on the dire side. And last but not least is going to be the Sven, which is being played by NS from Virtus Pro. 
and uh, we'll be probably going with the Lina. Looks like it's going to be a semi trialing with Enchantress in the Dire Jungle. Maybe the Enchantress is just going to go there for wards. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that is going to be the lineup for the Dire side. Let's jump ourselves over to the Radiant side where we see uh, the first one, Shadow Shaman, being played by BG4I20. I don't know what that stands for. BG4I20 will be the player for the Shadow Shaman, who is looking to be on the bottom lane so far, and a lot of shoutouts. I don't know why they're shouting out to themselves. But anyway, we see Trek on the Tidehunter on the Radiant side. Middle lane will be going to Fuzzy, up on the Invoker, which had the comments when he saw the lineup that he was up against. I mean, come on, he saw Garrus Gaming, he didn't know what he was up against until he actually joined the lobby. First words of his were, oh, so that is why Infuse lost. So... Yeah, he knows what he's up against, and he is going to be an evoker up against uh, the middle lane, which will be reserved for Dendi. So he's uh, one on one with Dendi, which is probably not something that he's very all too happy about. We see Rint Runner being played by the Battle Fuga, begins. never stop play. And she will be uh, taking up the top lane by herself, with Lycan most likely going into the jungle. Will be played by Klotz, and uh, he is going to, yeah, he's going to be jungling. He's going to be fine. And everybody of. Uh, of Garage Gaming already uh, warding there. I mean, they, were, they know they're up against Lycan, which is not something that you should be taking lightly. So they instantly ward the creep spawn, making sure that Easy Camp is not going to be any, uh, well, any farm for Lycanthrope, even though Lycan is moving towards the Dire Jungle. Quite unusual. Maybe knowing that uh, Enchantress is going to be on the Radiant Jungle. It could be. It could be. Enchantress is indeed here, is already farming even. And I will put the last of the nice up, just so that you don't miss anything there. Uh, it will be Sven Lina, who will be uh, on this bottom lane. I mean, one stun, one follow-up stun, it will be a very dangerous situation for them to be in. And it's going to be Shadow Shaman that is the one that has to watch out most, because Tidehunter is a very tanky hero. Three base armor, uh, with uh, Shadow Shaman only of one. So he is going to be able to withstand the combination, I think. I'm not sure. Uh, but... Uh, I don't think Shadow Shaman is going to be withstanding the combination of the stuns and the damage coming out from the dire side. And they want to go and his blinks are there. There's the stun. There's the follow-up stun from Alina. There's the enchantress as well. Will it be enough damage? It looks like it might be. Anchor Smash there. They'll reduce the damage. Still with tight on the popping itself. Still staying alive. Shadow Shaman picking up the last hit up on the enchantress, which is actually the first blood. And that is a dive that was so not worth it. Impatience coming out from Garage Gaming and the tower, of course, getting uh, helping out with that kill up on the Enchantress. And I can't believe you go for the, the, the Tide Hunter. I did say he would survive the combination, and he did do that. He did do that indeed. Popped himself, stayed alive. First blood going towards the Radiant team. And I did, I did, yeah, I did put up the, the names of the teams. It is uh, CBN, e CNB Esports. That will be taking that first blood. In the meantime, mid lane is going to be Invoker on 1 for 2 so far, with Dendi being on 10 for 8. Massive difference, Dendi being able to deny a lot of the creeps here by Fuzzy. But I guess as long as Fuzzy is getting levels, he is not too unhappy about that. I mean, it is a pretty difficult lane up for, for him to be at, even though, in theory, nobody should really die. I say in theory, because you never know what Dendi can do, and then again, you never know what an Invoker can do. Or who's going to come and help someone in the jungle, which might be this combination right here. We see Lina, he's, she's jungling together with uh, the Enchantress, getting some levels up on there. Making sure that Sven gets full experience and uh, gold from that uh, bottom lane. And Shadow Shaman is really too scared to move towards his tower again. I don't blame him, to be fair, because he would die from that combination, for sure. <laughs> he would definitely die. Definitely die. We see uh, Windrunner level 3, 11 for 6 up on her, with Darks here, 11 for 2, so very even so far. Um, level of l higher level up on the dark seer than the, the wind runner, but still not that much uh, difference so so far. And it, it, again, these two both have an escape. As long as Lycan is not coming out of the jungle, I think they will be fine. And I do think they know that uh, Lycan is indeed farming in the radiant, uh, sorry, in, in their own jungle, in the dire jungle. Uh, so we might have something uh, going to be set up there for that Lycan throw. But so far. They're uh, they're just doing fine with that, and actually Sven using a stun to clear out the creeps, using a potion for that. Actually, I think he just needed an inventory slot. There we go. Picks up his boots of speed. He's got another stun in five seconds. Might be trying to go for the Shadow Shaman. Shadow Shaman, who is level two, uh, level three actually now, getting some experience here. Uh, good job for him, as I thought he would be uh, locked down way too much, but he is not. He is actually higher level than the Tide Hunter. Anchor Smash making sure that the Tide Hunter gets some lasted there, as he still he is quite hesitant to be up for his combination because. I mean, he doesn't have a self anymore, and that combination is, it, it's continuing to be very difficult for him to deal with, even with that three armor. I mean, 
yeah, we saw him survive that combination, but maybe next time it will be uh, we will be not be so lucky. So who knows? Who knows indeed? Um, maybe Enchantress knows he, she's uh, sh on her way with a troll dark warlord. Might be wanting to go for that. There are boards in the jungle that are scouting her out. I guess nah, maybe not. Maybe not. But Tidehunter is going to be very safe here. And Chandra's coming from the back, knowing that uh, Shadow Shaman is no longer being there. Temporal has some bottled up in Invisibility Room. Let's see if she's going to use it instantly or if she's just going to get some last hits for free. Well, not for free, but it seems to be for free. 23 for 19. She's doing a great job. The only one on numbers that's keeping up with her is perhaps the Lycan. But then again, Lycan is in the jungle. Jungle kids do not mean as much as... Uh, as the creeps mean in uh, on the lane. That's just the way it goes. Tidehunter still being very safe. Level 3 right now. He's just waiting until he has that level 6 so he can uh, finally fight back. Because right now he can't fight back. And it looks like Garage knows that, oh, one stun could mean the end here for the Shadow Shaman. Tidehunter hiding. There's the stun. There's the Lina follow up stun as well. This time Enchantress is a bit more safe, but it's still going to be the Shadow Shaman that dies here. But Lina gets picked off there by the tower. Spence still taking a lot of damage. Is there going to be more tower helping out? Couple more right clicks needed. He dodges. He tries to get away. Pops himself. Will be fine. Tidehunter doesn't want to go too much out of his comfort zone of the tower. So is going to be staying alive so far. Cold snap on the Enchantress who might not be fine at all. Hello Fuzzy. Fuzzy getting a kill on Cool Story Bear. A.K.A. Kebab. I don't think that was worth killing a Shadow Shaman for. Losing two. Two for one. Again. Garage Gaming. Slightly overextending. Darkseer is going to find this Lycanthrope. Lycanthrope runs. Oh, no, he runs. Oh, he turns around though and he kills him. Lycan getting the kill. <laughs> nice. Darkseer was not his, that was not his intention. And now they know that he is there. They will be uh, roaming around a bit more now in the jungle. We do see Enchantress now giving up and going for the creeps inside the jungle as we see Dandy. With this invisibility rune, is going to go for the windrunner. Melt damage was there. Is it going to be more? Yes, there is going to be more. And it's Denny that kills off the windrunner and uh, pops the melt to so she can stay in the range of the tower and continue uh, moving away back to the middle lane. In the meantime, we see the shackle up on Lena, level 4, versus level 5. There will be a gush as well. Either shock as well will be enough. Some from Lena still hitting, but look at that damage, and it is the creeps that finish her off. And this bottom lane is definitely not working out as Garrus Gaming intended to. I mean, really. The, the high aggression that they expected is turning around them. Spen having to use his, uh, his Warcry to get away, but a Tornado just finished him off. Hello, Fuzzy, once more. Tornado. Helping out. And I mean, they don't really care for the tower just yet. They don't have a level 6 on the Shadow Shaman, but... Since they have four here anyway, why not go for it? And like a throat, knowing that he has been caught out in the jungle on the dire side, is actually going to go into the Radiant jungle right now. I mean, the wards are still there from the Radiant team. Uh, and they will actually, they are just refreshed, so still no wards there, or st and still no uh, creeps there. So probably we will be rotating again towards the, towards the dire jungle, because uh, there's just too many creep blocks on, the, on this side. Well, two. At least he's able to get still three creep camps there. Shadow Shaman level four. Lena back to farm and Lena level four but already died twice. We see Enchantress looking for something in the jungle. It's gonna find the Lycanthrope though. That is not the right you wanna go. And there goes the ultimate. There's Tom. Nice, nice stop from the sand tower. And Nature's attendants go in there and he, he will be fine. And here comes the Shadow Shaman. Oh! Finding the spend, there comes the stun on the Lycan, will be enough, follow up stun from Lina, it's not hitting Lycan too fast, Lycan turning his eyes towards Lina, Shadow Shaman is still there, trying to throw out some last right clicks, but sh he doesn't have any mana anymore, Most of it. oh, power shot, hello, Windrunner, and <laughs> there goes the spend, thinking he could go around, landing a stun up on the Windrunner, Ravage being used, though, tied onto level 6, hits on 3, anchor smash as well, power shot once again, Sven taking a lot of damage, Stick is there, Wolf still chasing him down, then he's still sitting there waiting for his chance to get a kill, Shadow Shaman locks him in place, though will be enough, I don't think so, he'll still go down, and John for stealing a creep, stealing the wolves and getting one of those to get the last hit up on the Shadow Shaman, Sven actually staying alive by the way, and Denny not done just yet, gonna be done soon though, at least that's what you would expect, but no, he's outnumbered, but he doesn't care. Trying to go for last hit on Windrunner, but Windrunner Windruns herself away, doing her name justice. Who might not be so lucky? Sven, Warcry once again. Wolf Radiant chasing him down again. Is under attack. Will be f will be enough. Oh, there's the trap. Useful. Good micro from Dandy, making sure that the wolves are not able to chase down Radiant's top the, the Sven. Otherwise, they would have been able to kill him. Sven TP's home. Smart choice. And that was the Ravis being used. Seven for three. 
the aggression coming off from Garage Gaming not paying off apart from if your name is Dendy. Because he is actually not died just yet and he's going to get a last hit on the tower there as well. Bottom and he's going to not home. find a tight hunter because tight hunter already TP'd home. Smart choice. Or at least it looks like he TP'd home. Doesn't have a cooldown. Oh, but just bought a new TP. It's cool. Okay. That Dyer's is fine too. Middle tower is under attack. So, moment of peace. 10 kills in 9 minutes. And uh, we can take a look at the, at the graphs because we really haven't been able to do that so far. Let's see. Oh, boom. Dive. So where's the dire side? That's because of that tower. I mean, they still got some, some kills for themselves, but that tower making the difference right here. First tower going down in the game. Giving that goal to Dendi. You're not the one that you want to have that goal on. We have got the experience graph exactly at zero, which is quite surprising considering that the kills is actually four kills difference. But that is because, uh, look at the level difference here. That is because... Uh, Again, Dandy has got a lot of experience here, was there for all kills that have been done, or at least uh, two out of three, Dyer's and has not died yet a single time. Attack. And it is the, uh, the uh, Lina and Enchantress, which are actually quite low, and that is the reason why it's being kept as here. Lina and Enchantress have been roaming around uh, a bit more, and uh, Darkseer and the Templar Assassin have just got a bit higher level. But then again, you see, you see the charts, you see the experience graph, zero, there you have it. And we have <laughs> Enchantress Tornado being put out, one of the most annoying things in the game. Being slowed. Vision is there. Hello, Sven. Landing a storm. Windrunner trying to win herself away. Will be enough. Dragon Slave only hitting on the Lycan. Lycan, who doesn't have a, a wolf form because he is uh, not got enough mana. Shackle still latches on the Lina, but Windrunner still goes down to the Enchantress, who actually got latched to the Lina. And Nature's Attendance will make sure that both of these two ladies are back up again. The four heroes here of Garage Gaming. The only one that don't have is Dendi, who is once again uh, surrounded by heroes and uh, staying alive Radiant so far. He's gonna slow down attack. his opponents three for one, and looks like he's gonna be able to get away quite safely. Um, maybe even try to go for a kill or takes a gush though. Ravage being used. He got his refraction up. If they don't get a kill now, that would be such a waste of refraction. Tornado will slow him down. And there's no mana left on the Tide Hunter. Is there gonna be a kill? Is there gonna be a cool snap? Yes, there is gonna be a cool snap, but he pops his invisibility. Anchor Smash will still be there. Was this not enough? Oh, refraction on their own again, but that is not going to be enough. Then they should be fine. In the meantime, Tier 1 Tower top lane goes down. And uh, Darkseer backs out of there again. Darkseer picks up a hood. You see Lyca throw, picks up a Vladimir's offering. Could go for Roshan right now. He just denied his own wolf. I was wondering what he was doing, but denied his own wolf. Shackles, latching on creeps, not latching on Denny. And that was actually the Ravage that got used. It was really a waste. Because that is the advantage that you have when you're a CNB gaming. You want to get those team fights going. Oh, what are you doing? Why are you so low? Oh, it's gross. Now you want to get those team fights going into your favor, but if you're going to use your Ravage and not going to get any kills in return, well, then that is not really good now, is it? No, it's not. Uban. I don't know why he said that. But, oh well. Uh, anyway, we see Templar Assassin looking to go for a... I think a Desolator is going to be his first item. I mean, he's being playing so aggressive. Doesn't really think he needs a Blink Dagger, apparently. And uh, Desolator, we've seen that more often. And, of course, he knows that the Roshan can get taken down by the Radiant team quite fast with that Lycan there. And with the Desolator there, he will be able to do the same thing. He w would even be able to solo it, and he probably would do that as well. Ravage 50 seconds. Let's see if we can see some other uh, items that we haven't seen just yet. Invoker doesn't really have that much just yet. Let's see what the donker is, donkey is bringing though. Oh, it's just a smoke. So they want to smoke up. Shadow Shaman uh, doesn't have that much either, but then again, he's playing full support, so he doesn't really want that much. And he's been counter warding a lot there as well. I mean, he's doing a good job keeping up his wards and uh, making sure that the jungle is theirs. Uh, they do find Dendi in general though, it looks like it's going to be a BKB rather than a Diffusal Blade. Radiant's Wanted to stay alive against... Uh, I guess that's a, that's a noble cause as well. I mean, there's a lot of disable coming off from the Radiant team. And of course Shadow Shaman as well as Tidon to the counters to their... Those two heroes are just... Um, are just uh, BKBs. That's all I can say about that, really. I was wrong about the des Desolator. Even though we do see a lot of Desolators on Templar Assassins recently. And they do, go, well, they go for Roshan regardless of Desolator or not. Who cares about that minus armor? Well, he, there is some minus armor, of course, coming off from Melt. And the faction being there, able to uh, withstand those hits. The Sven also tanking up some of the, some of the hits. 
Sven also picking up an over club. Does he also want to go for BKB? I wouldn't be that surprised. Almost tight done on the Dark Sea. A lot of magical damage, of course, coming off of the Radiant team. They want to be able to withstand the team fight potential that they, they don't have personally. Maybe not as much as the Radiant team. And with the pipe there, they're just able to neglect all the damage apart from the stun from the from the Ravage, of course. In which case, you can get BKBs. That is exactly what they're doing. 1k gold upon the Windrunner. Probably wants to go for a... Well, I would say 4 stuff, but then again, do they have someone else that's building the, the mechanism? Because they kind of need one. And uh, we see Lycan throw picking up a Medallion of Courage, but, you know, it's too late. Normally we see Lycan picking up a Medallion of Courage to go for Roshan quite fast, but then again, Roshan's already dead, so he's too late with that one. And Chantress is going to be found out in the jungle here, though he's going to take a gush in the face if they find him. Shackle, latching, Lina, Ether Shock, Power Shock, right click, and it's Windrunner that picks up the kill. In the meantime, Gush indeed still landed on, uh, on Kebab, I think. But he'll be fine. Dark in the meantime, destroying a tower. Mid tower goes down, so all tier 1 towers on the Radiant side are down. And this is the first tower going down on the Dire side, getting some gold back for CNB. CNB, who is at a disadvantage? I mean, the, the gold craft will still probably move up again after this tower, but it's still going to be in favor of Garage Gaming. Same thing goes for the experience graph, which will actually not go off up, up again, of course, from killing off the tower, but it will go up again from killing off the Lina. And, uh,. Let's see what the teams are going to go up uh, against next. I mean, Garage Gaming has a lineup that can go very aggressive, and especially with the Templar Assassin, that kind of needs to be aggressive. Templar Assassin BKB is done, by the way. And can be extra aggressive now that she not only has a BKB, but also, of course, the Aegis. Maybe she wants to wait until Sven has got more as well, though. Could be. I know, maybe she wants to bait out the Ravage again, because that is up again. And that is something you really don't want to fight against. But then again, Tidehunter is way away from his team. Radiance bottom and it looks attack. like maybe Garage knows that. They want to go in on this, though. Invoker is going to be the target here. Iron shells all around. Refractions are up there. Get it ready for it. There's the Surge. Invoker already back again. No kill. The Blinks are there. <laughs> They wanted to go on us, but they didn't. Or at least they couldn't. Anyway, I'll put up the the net, net worth, which you want to see mostly. Uh, we see uh, <laughs> Templar Assassin being highest up on there. No surprise really there, because if we look at the last hits, I mean, she, w she isn't on top of the charts, but she has not died yet, which is not what a lot of heroes can say up on the Dire team. Actually, the only hero that has not died on the Dire team is the Templar Assassin. As we see on the Radiant team, though, there's three heroes that haven't died yet. One of them is the Lycan. Lycan, who is going to be the force to be reckoned with for Garage Gaming uh, later on. So far, he has been doing okay. He's been escaping quite well with his uh, wolf form. And ha is going to try to go for this. Oh, but they don't... Oh, they have a attempt to work. Rab is being used. Stun from uh, Sven, though. There's the Laguna Blade upon the Invoker. Dragon Slave to finish it off. And it is the Dark Seer that goes down to the Lycan. But look at that Lycan. He really has to run right now. Impetus damage doing so much. He's got 26 HP left, trying to run. Does he have anything for his help? He's gonna try to TP. Will be in time. I think it might be before his own illusion catch up with him. Shadow Shaman for a uh, Dark Seer trade. Tornado will not hit on the Sven anymore, which is probably the target. It will hit on Danny though, but you know, they don't really care. Uh, right clicks there. Slow on the wind, run a cold snap up on Danny. There goes the refraction already off again, but he goes into now. Then his damage, doing some damage, and it's done as well on the invoker. EMP, making sure that Danny doesn't have any mana anymore. Traps being casted all around, slowing them down, and meaning maybe Dandy wants to continue going for this. Looks like they do, looks like he does. And it's gonna be the Lina, that's sorry, the wind front is gonna be the target here. They're getting slowed again. Windrunner was there. Oh, sorry, Windrunner was there. Even wolves are gonna focus on Sven, who has to back out from these wolves because they do quite a bit of damage. They shouldn't underestimate those. And it's actually Lycan that's gonna chase them and uh, chase them down. Being blocked by his own wolves, power shot won't hit it. Stun, nice, do nice touch of the stun. Lycan on the killing spree, getting the hit. Tornado EP will hit on a lot of heroes here. Lina is gonna get shackled to the other red has power shot, and Invoker picks up Lina. Windrunner picking up Enchantress. Templar Assassin and Darkskip do not want to be here anymore. I don't blame them. Nice shackle. 12 for 6. CNB, like I said, making good use of having the uh, having Garage Game being so aggressive. Like, overextending. That's what they keep doing. Cold snap, then me getting shackled. 2 or 3. EMP going off again. He's in a lot of trouble here trying to get away, and there goes the Aegis. Will they stick around for more? Though Sentry Ward is there as well. Tower is going to get pressure, but here comes TP, and it's going to be Enchantress and Sven. There's the first stun. 
So the Shaman having to back off, then he back in all of that again. Side legs maybe hitting on both. Yeah, also hits on Fuzzy, but it's the Shadow Shaman that dies first. Windrunner is going to Windrunner. BKB up on the Templar Assassin. She doesn't want to get stopped. She gets slowed. Uh, Windrunner gets slowed anyway. Windrunner will drop here. Melt damage. Templar Assassin double kill. Dominating Dandy for this fight right now as Invoker was able to back off. Invoker was able to TP out. But that is, uh, I was just talking about overextension from, oh, what, what are you doing, what are you doing, what are you doing? An anchor around my well, that is Darcy picking up the Tidehunter, still trying to juke his way out of the forest, but wasn't able to do so. But I was just saying about uh, Gary's Gaming overextending, but that was overextension from CMB. They got the agency to back up instantly. Hello, Enchantress. Bye, Enchantress. Like him picking up the kill. Tornado making sure that Darcy is there. He still has a search that will be enough. I mean, it's a fast wolf. And he decides to go just for the time instead. It doesn't get the knife. EMP goes off, but Darkseer is not going to get chased. It's going to be uh, Klutz that's going to be getting away and is going to try to just continue farming. In the meantime, who might not be so lucky, he might not be able to continue farming, is this Invoker as he gets teased down by Dandy, getting slowed here as well. Surge up by, on Dandy, melt damage there, but Invis and Penalty was faster. Vacuum gets free. Tidehunter ready to throw out a Ravage. He's got us this gem of true side as well. Gosh lands on the Lina, Shackle latches. There's a lot of action in this game, by the way, by Lina. It's tied onto the piece of the kill. These teams! Really? They're just continuing to going at each other. I don't feel like I have any time to just check out this graph. Just so you see it goes graph. Experience graph. Wow. So CNB takes its fight. And that is uh, Garage Gaming taking the fight. And then CNB takes a couple of kills back. It's still it's slowly going more into the direction of CNB though. And in the meantime, top lane, wow, Lycan in a lot of trouble, but it's gonna just walk from himself out. And now turns around because you know that his team is here. There's gonna be a gush, maybe, yes, there is. Gush on Enchantress, tornado on the Dark Sea, nice shackle, Enchantress dead, we're not finishing it off, and Dark Sea gets away, but that's the tier 2 tower going down. And still, no ravage. That is what CMB is looking for. They're looking for a kill, they're looking for. Uh, for a team fight, and they're not getting it, but they're getting kills in return, they're getting towers in return, and slowly but steadily, the gold graph is creeping up again. And there are tower ahead now. Blink dagger up on the Templar Assassin. Uh, Sven taking a lot of damage from these ancients. Sven? Sven? 77 HP. Oh, here comes Danny helping out. Side blades uh, getting some last hits. I will take your farm. Sven can stay for the experience, I guess. And uh, Sven actually picked up a uh, Morbid Mask, I hope he's not thinking about going for Mask of Madness, but you know, you never know. It is, uh, it is a Sven, and it is uh, an S, so who knows, who knows. Perhaps it, uh, it will work out. Sunstrike? Checking out Roshan is back yet. I don't think they have uh, timing properly. Well, Sunstrike happen uh, happens at the exact same time as the, uh, as the trap. Still uh, two and a half minutes, though, before he's up again. Vacuum. I don't think that's just harassment though. If someone can kill someone, it is the life in killing off the dark sea and not the other way around. Even though it looks like he's thinking he can do it. With the Necronomicon there on the Lycan throw though, having to back off. There we go. A Necronomicon level uh, level two so far. Which is of course a good item to have on the Lycan throw. I mean if you can if you howl it also it affects everybody. Also the uh, the images Windrun are gonna get stunned here. Windrun is gonna already be out, Laguna Blade, oh, mechanism at the right time, and there's gonna be support, there's gonna be a tight hunter, will be enough though, Windrun is still staying alive, Blink in from Dandy, who's trying to TP out, he's not gonna be able to, Windrun are not able to TP out, BKB up on Dandy, so he doesn't get stunned by this, uh, Centaur here, and he tries to chase down the Shadow Shaman, who shackles Dandy, but it's not gonna be in time, Lina finishes off, hello, Fuzzy, I think you better run away from this one, being outnumbered, Lycan doesn't care about being outnumbered, gets stunned by Lina, though, Lina was trying to back out, but will probably still die there, there we go, the rest of Garage Gaming backing out, will Sven be in time to back out of there, I am not sure, Lycan actually thinking about, should he go for that, should he not go for that, he doesn't want to go for that. Ravage still up on the tide hunter, by the way. Surge up so that uh, Sven can go uh, away, but the block was there. Wolves are still chasing him down. And I think he might be able to get him with that wolves, with those wolves. Nah, wolves are, are gonna disappear. Never mind, they get resummoned. And there's not gonna be any extra kills. Lina goes down, but so does a couple of heroes for CNV. And uh, the only thing that they can be happy about is that there's not gonna be anything in return for it. I mean, there's no. Uh, <laughs> look at the path of an S. He doesn't want to get sunstriked. Sunstroked, sunstricken, sunstriked. I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna go for sunstriked. Sunstroked, sunstroke. 
Sunstruck? Sunstruck! I know, I'll get there eventually. Anyway, um, the fight was in favor of Garage Gaming, but but they um, they don't get anything in return. No T2 Towers? No Roshan, or not just yet. Anyway, now Roshan is back. And they know it, because the ward is there, the trap is there, and the Sunstrike was just done, so I don't think that the Dire Radiant knows that it's there up again already. And we have uh, Crystalis being built up on the Templar Assassin. Going for those uh, Imma Imma Meld crits. If uh, she is lucky, blinks away into the Roshan pit and is gonna just go for this. Major 10 is there. This Roshan will drop very fast. I mean, with the minus armor there from the Meld damage, from the Meld, it's just uh, it's a lot of damage being taken by the Roshan. Poor little fella. Tornado will scout them out though. Will there be enough follow up? Parshal will scout them out as well. But it won't be in time. EMP will hit. Maybe they're just trying to get, take the fight afterwards. Because everybody gathering up here is going to be Windrunner taking some damage from EMP. It's going to be Sven locked inside a. Well, not locked inside a uh, War Trap. Shackle though. Is it going to be a Ravage? There's the Ravage. Hits on three. It's already Shadow Shaman that goes down though. And there goes the Tide Hunter as well. Being killed off by the Sven Lycanthrope. Killing off the, killing off the Sven in return though. There goes the Templar Assassin as well. And where is the Aegis? Who picked up the Aegis? I didn't see who p Ah, there we go. Darkseer picked up the Aegis and he's gonna TP out. He's gonna stay alive, unlike his Lina, who's gonna get picked off by the Invoker. I'm done. Enchanter staying alive as well as the Darkseer who picked up the Aegis. I thought it would be the Templar Assassin that would be picking up the Aegis, but apparently, uh, no can do. And they're pushing down the tower. I mean, this is what I'm talking about. CNB wins the team fight and they're getting a tier to tower in return, okay? They don't get Roshan. Dyer's middle tower but they get a tier to tower, which is, uh, well, map control. Map control is very important. And I might even try to go for more. No Templar Assassin for another 20 seconds. Vacuum, no. Mechanism will make sure the vacuum doesn't do anything. Fortification being forced out. Wolf still there. One wolf gets turned around towards the Lycan by the Enchanter. I mean, to turn around to face the wolf. Oh, this is so annoying. I mean, wolf with an iron shell. He doesn't show himself, but they know he's there. He gets a surge as well, getting extra speed. <laughs> like a nose that he's there, gonna get chased down. Still knows that he's there. Here comes the dark sea. We'll be able to. Oh, wolf form being used. Yeah, <laughs> at least that got forced out. That is probably super annoying if you have your own wolf turned around, turned around against you. About that, uh, yeah. Only one tier two tower left standing on the side of Garage Gaming, and this might be the first game that we see Garage Gaming, who we've seen multiple times before, but we see them in some trouble. This lichen is getting bigger and bigger. Has not died yet a single time. It's six to zero, and even though his items don't look that impressive, he still has an economical level three. I mean, that melt from uh, from the from Dendi is not going to be enough. If I mean, she can't be hiding in invisibility anymore because uh, the Necronomicons will uh, will pop her out again, or at least will reveal her. Uh, Spen, who has been having a tough time, has not been having as much farm as uh, as he probably would have would have liked. I mean, he's died three times. I'm just gonna put up the net worth again. Uh, it is a Templar Assassin though that's still gonna get quite is quite big, but she has been picked off uh, only once so far. That was actually the first time that she died just now. But they have a lot of stuff against the the Templar Assassin, and with a lot of stuff, I mean just right click damage, a lot of right click damage coming off from the Lycan, and, and you know, you can't hide in your melt anymore, your BKB is not going to be worth anything if you're, if, because Lycanthrope is not magical damage, you can just hit her a lot, hard. The only thing that she's going to be safe from is, uh, is the Ravage, is the Shackle, is of course the Hex and uh, another, another Shackle. Nothing, I mean, it's a good item, don't get me wrong, because it stops a lot, but it doesn't stop the Lycan, and right now you want to be able to stop the Lycan. Let's take a look at some other graphs. Gold graph, I like this. Back to zero. Even though I have to say it's two towers in favor of CNB CNB Esports. So, it is, uh, yeah, two towers in favor, which is actually 3k gold. So you, if the towers go even again, we will see the we will, we will see it drop again towards the dire side. But so far, it's being kept even. Experience graph. I'm expecting, even though you know you see the game pass, I'm expecting it to be 1k in favor of the Dire team. But really, that is really nothing for 26 minutes in the game. And since we have a pause, and since I see some questions in the chat, um, Garage Gaming is actually uh, Balance. Who is, uh, what's he playing again? 
Balas is playing the Lina. Yes, he is. Uh, Balas is uh, playing the Lina, who is from Karas Gaming, and he has four friends to help him, namely being Kebab on the Enchantress, cool story bear, um, Havorst on the Dark Seer, little cute mean kitty, Dendi, who is playing the Temporal Assassin, who is going under his real name, and last but not least is NS from Virtus Pro. So those are Garage Gaming, and they are up against C and B. And if you're wondering why I can see him, if you just tune in, because I already said this, so if you s if I said this, you know, go turn around and do something else. Why is CNB holding up so good against a lineup with those names? CNB is a Brazilian team who was uh, pretty with a pretty long history in Dota One. They only recently, um, only recently got uh, into Dota Two, and they are uh, showing themselves properly right now. They are making sure that they ha make a good first impression, and they do. And I do think that we're going to see more of them, because they are throwing up a hell of a game. Overextending only slightly, but then again, it's still Dota. Overextending is part of it, right? Overextending is like half of the game. Which is why Chinese teams are doing it so good, because they don't overextend, they're playing it very carefully. Well, okay, not all. There is still... There is still, uh... Chinese games that do overextend. But, hi, how long? We have a penalty. It's 4 a.m. Um, it's, it's 4 a.m.? Where is he from? Is it a four hour difference? I don't think so. And for the people in the chat, I do think that uh, this game is watchable on in Dota TV, but I'm not sure. Uh, you can, however, if you are in Dota TV, you can hear me because I've got my sound turned on. So that much is at least uh, there, so that you can listen uh, to me there. As well as to uh, Spanish cast, uh, I do think if there's a there's another English cast for this as well. Bill's Carrot is casting this. It's on Twitch, I believe, so you can uh, check out that stream as well. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure if he has his in-game sound on so that you can watch uh, listen to him in game as well though. But uh, but you're, there's only one way to find out. Check see if you can find the game. Tidehunter almost got enough mana for his uh, blink dagger, which is probably what he wants, just so we can force out those team fights even more. Um, blink dagger almost complete with that bunch of gold from the creeps. And yeah, uh, just oh, we've seen it ends a bit below a thousand. Okay, I mean we didn't see the end just yet. The rest are being full support here. I mean he died six out of the out of the thirteen kills that the dire has. It is six times on a shadow shaman. Uh, one good thing about that is, I mean, he is a support. It doesn't really matter if he gets shut down that hard. Um, and, okay, he's giving gold away to his opponents, but, I mean, rather have kills on the Shadow Shaman than on the Lycan, right? That is, uh, that is the way it goes. The way the cookie crumbles. And Blink Dagger indeed completed upon a Tide Hunter now. Invisibility rune on Dendi, so we might see him going for a kill right now. Even though he has to get worried about the Tide Hunter. Oh, actually, Tide Hunter's gem dropped in the previous fight, I guess. Because he did go down. Who has a gem? Let's see that. Nobody has a gem. I guess gem got destroyed. Mask of Madness. Hello, Sven. Mask of Madness complete. And BKB almost complete as well. Did I just miss him farming that up so fast? Really? He's doing a good job too. Net worth. Not bad. No, it's not in the top five. Top five is three people of Garage Gaming in there and only two. Sorry, only two of the dire side, of the radiant side of the... Uh, oh, wait a second, please. Shackle, BKB, their TP out there! Will it be enough? Yeah, it should be enough. Yeah, there's nothing they can do against BKB. But, uh... What was I saying? I can't remember what I was saying. That's the downside of uh, being up this late. It's not really late, but it's more like being casting this uh, this long. As I just remind myself to take another sip of my drink. Uh, the blinks are out there. They know that the spend is there. Power Soap was counted out. He will, uh... He not, doesn't have his BKB, just that Lycan is on the chase though. Is there gonna be a follow up? Nope. They uh, they just uh, chase them out of there. And they're looking to go for the last tier 2 tower, still standing on the side of the Dyer. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. And they have a lot of pushing power, so they can just do this. Though it won't be until um, they Dyer's go for the tier 3s that they will really see, really see how they shape up against the pushing power from, or counter push, I should say, from the Dyer team. Tornado hits on Lina EMP there as well, definitely blast. Shadow Shaman Wars, look at this tier 3 tower, their fortification is on cooldown. This might actually be a tier 3 tower going down. Um, and Chandra's picking up a uh, Necronomical Warrior, but that doesn't matter. They pick up a tier 3 pipe pop on the dire side, they want to go in on this. There goes the Lycan popping us up his crew from Replica Wall Vacuum in. It is the Lycan that's getting a Laguna Blade, but it barely does anything. He is so tanky. And they back off, they got what they came for, they got the tier 3 tower, pull off some ultimates. 
and uh, back off again. I don't blame them. They don't. They still. Uh, they still have the ravage. But right now, it's not really needed. They forced everybody back. Tier three tower, gone. And that is a. Uh, that is just uh, a, sh a show of strength. How much pushy power they have. They will go again when the shadow shaman has their wards again, probably. And if you're wondering, I just. I just realized. Um, because of course I said CN CNB is Brazilian and most of the heroes from uh, most of the players from uh, Garage are European actually everybody is European uh, Eastern European even uh, so we have got a slight ping difference as it is played on US East and I will now check for you how much that is and hopefully not miss a kill even though I just got a solid blink out wait a second I'm gonna check that first before going back there uh, Dark here is gonna be in some trouble. Fourth, where are you gonna go? Four stuff in. Parcel doesn't hit. Gush is gonna land. Is there gonna be a shackle? Yes, there is. Latches as well. Uh, but will there be enough damage? Focus fire will help out. There is <laughs> Shiva's guard ready. Uses a ravage to stop this. To stop this Dark Seer who had the ages as well. Will be up once again. It doesn't have a TP. It's on cooldown. Another shackle there. Is there gonna be more damage? It's gonna. Yeah, there's gonna be more damage. And Dark Seer will go down here for sure. Tied on to picking up the last hit. Okay, now I can look at that. No, no, I can't just look at it that way. That just yet, yeah, Dendi is gonna be uh, under Dendi harassment here. Is, is there gonna be more? No, he blinks off. Doesn't want to be caught out in that one. Okay, so now I can check out the pings. So we see pings. We see uh, Dendi on 200, Kebab on 200, I am on 200 about ish, Ballas on 200. Everybody about there on 200. Actually, C and B, they're Brazilian and they have more than 200. They have about 250. So okay, it is in favor of the dire team. But then again, oh. We're from full country. <laughs> uh. Anyway, it is uh, both teams having some lag issues, or at least having playing not on ideal pings. Let's put it that way. Uh, CNB is slightly at a disadvantage, though. I have to point that out. I'm still doing amazingly well. Goldcraft now in favor of them as they take down the last tier to tower and so far I mean yeah Garage Gaming has won some fights but as pointed out earlier they're not getting these towers then he tried to harass this tower slightly but was first out instantly by a TP from Fuzzy I do like his name don't you like his name Fuzzy really I like his name experience graph still Favor of Garage. Won't oh, sound like Garage. Hmm. Not good. Hypersome picked up by the Lycanthrope. He's got 2k gold in his sleeve. Probably gonna go for a, uh, what's it called? A Salt Kuras. Of course it is. South America. We've got uh, Ultimate Orb on Windrunner. Probably gonna go for a uh, sheep stick to deal with that type for assassin. Who almost got a Barisa, by the way. Well, saying almost, should have it. Yeah, he does have it. Let's see what he was thinking. Recipe isn't that expensive. Unless he wants to go for it. Divine Rapier. Nah, he doesn't want to go for a Rapier. But it would be fun to see. Sorry, I still have a cold. It's not getting any better with sitting here casting. And we had a pause on... well... That was slightly, um... Well, very fast fuzzy. Is away, loading screen. Why is he loading his screen? PP. Oh, then he's the toilet. Sorry. Professionalism. So, gold per minute. Like a throw 487. Highest up on the radiance. No surprise there. Then the other Templar Assassin. 465. Not keeping up with, uh, with the like a throw. Let's see how it looks on the well, net worth. We see that. Gold per minute. We saw that. Silver gold. It's like a throw all over the place. 
Lycanthrope experience per minute, Lycanthrope hero level, Lycanthrope... Well! Lycanthrope will stop on top everywhere! Look at this! Oh, that's... Oh, what did I do? There's no hotkey. So Lycanthrope is doing pretty good. <laughs> and there's the resume. And there's the blinking on Lycan who pops up as well for me immediately. Doesn't want to have a surprise fight. I'm still thinking about going on it though. Doing some minus armor up on uh, Denny, but uh, backing out again. Rather continue with far. We saw the blink dagger. Just thinking about what I just said. Sometimes I say so much that I forget what I say, so that I don't really know what I've already said and what I didn't say. I know that I didn't say this one yet. Sorry for screaming right there. I didn't say that the invoker picked up an agonims, but he has. He has. Lycanthrope ball spice. Wow, wow, wow. Really? How did Lycan still die? Well, now he is back again, but he still died on this top lane, being a ganked up. Sorry for missing that one. Double. Uh, okay. Now we know why. Templar says some double damage, still is complete. That is painful. Sorry for missing that kill. Quite important kill as well. The buyback was there. And it looks like uh, CNB is uh, gonna push down the bottom lane once more. They know that there's no tier 3 tower, that they have the Shadow Shell Awards. Radiance middle they have the Blink Rabbits and they have the Lycan once again. Though if the Lycan dies this time, he won't have a buyback once more. And that is quite painful. And he is still doesn't have his item complete that he wants. So grass. There goes the Shadow Shaman Wards. There goes the wall. <laughs> One of the wolves actually gets uh, locked in place. There's a vacuum in. BKB's all over the place. Stun hits on the Shadow Shaman who will go down very fast. Or not. Or not. He is still alive for now. He'll probably drop soon though. They're still gonna turn the Darkseer into a chicken, but he dies. Darkseer picking up the kill for him regardless. They're chasing down more heroes. They're not gonna find any though. Moving through the dark sea rule is like it's nothing. In the meantime, Barrack still went down to 500 HP. They can do that again, but Shadow Shaman boards are down, so I'm not sure. The still Ravage is still up, though, but the BKBs are used. So this might be their window of opportunity. Lycan is up there. Five seconds until his wolf form once more. And they could just want to go for this. They could just want to blink in, Ravage them, and own the place. And the or just go in and kill off the barracks. Ravage being used here. Darkseer is gonna be the first one to be attacked. Look at that damage, and then is Darkseer going down. Deafening blast going through. No more BKB up for Sven, nor for Zenny. This tide under drops on the side due to the Templar Assassin. TP out from the Lycanthrope. Get stunned. No TP for you. A Laguna blade in your face. Wind runner, no TP either. Getting stunned. And double kill for Balas. <laughs> you cannot escape from the redhead. I actually. There's a lot of redheads in this game. There's three. Is that all the redheads? I think so. But that is at least defending of their barracks, and even though I thought uh, it started out well, it didn't end out well. And this game could still go either side, because like we saw just now, I mean, if they continue to push there, if they were able to get the barracks to still die, it's still worth it. Um, at the same time, their side is getting bigger and bigger, Denny's getting bigger, Sven is getting bigger, and at some point, they will be. They will not be having that advantage of the Ravage anymore with all the BKBs. And uh, Roshan there as well, of course, will be taken down again by Sven and uh, Templar Assassin again. And Roshan for the dire side. And that's gonna be a free Roshan. Templar Assassin picking up the ages. And the cheese. You know, because she wants both. Very greedy. But there's no inventory slot for Sven, so okay. That's gonna be it. Maybe he wants to sell the cheese. So of course, it's like 500 gold, I believe. Oh no. Gives it to the Dark Sea. Blink outs all over the place. Don't know why. It's a mystery. I'm still, I mean, normally you think like, what can these two teams do to stop them from being at a disadvantage? But I don't feel like anybody's really at a disadvantage. They both have their strengths. They both have their weaknesses as well. I mean, as the BKBs are gone, you saw that. But then, with the BKBs gone, C and B got a bit overprotected, thinking like the Ravage can solve it all, which was I was thinking anyway. But it wasn't the case. It wasn't the case, and that is uh, well painful. 
Uh, Tanhunter also picking up a ghost after we saw it saving the life of Shadow Shaman so that he could throw out another hex before dying. And it's just, I mean, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of physical damage coming off from the Dire team in, in the form of the Templar Assassin as well as his fan. Uh, then again, if Lina managed to get a Laguna Blade on you while you're in your Ghost Scepter, well, adios. Because that is a lot of damage being done to you right then and there. And, uh, I just, I saw another one with a... Did I say, yeah, Lina has got a ghost after as well. I mean, he wants, uh, that's the same thing goes for Lycan. Lycan, who's got 1,400 gold again. Let's put up net worth again, because that is way more interesting to see. And that, that team fight actually changed this around. But at the same time, again, again, I say, Garage won a team fight, but the tier 2 towers still up. Yes, I know, I can't draw on the mini map. Still up. Still up, as there is a push on the way. Garage, thinking about going for something. Thinking about baiting out something, but at the same time, I think there's gonna be a smoke up for these two. And gem again up on the tide hunter. No smoke up, just uh, anticipation of a fight. Oh, Fuzzy showing himself, getting trapped. Tornado invisibility hides instantly. Lycan turns himself into a wolf. Blink and ravage before any BKBs are up. Deafening blast of them. There are the BKBs, but this is gonna be too late. I think it is. Laguna Blade still happens, but Shadow Shaman stays alive for some weird reason. It is the Dark Seer that goes down, it is the Lina that goes down, Sven goes down, three down, two to go, and it's Enchanters that's gonna try to get out from this one. Plus won't be able to follow him, but it is Denny that is uh, gonna not be able to get away in his melt because there's a gem of true side. Denny, is he gonna be able to stay alive? I don't think so. Uh, well, he has an Aegis, so maybe he is. Okay. A Shackle uh, in position for that, but BKB is on there. Oh, look at that melt damage! There goes the Shadow Shaman! BKB is still there, though no TP up on Dandy, he is trying to run away, run for his life, the wolf is chasing him, Blink is there, Tornado is there from the side, Fuzzy coming in from the side, and Dandy in some trouble, as he is gonna go down, Evoca picks him up, 4 heroes down, 4 Shadow Shaman, okay, small price to pay, but you know, worth it, and they're gonna continue pushing, and it looks like they don't want to go to the mid lane, because they still have a tier 3 tower there, no, they want to go for this tier 3 or this barracks, they should say buybacks from the TA though, they want to not give that barracks away. Is it gonna be a focus fire? Not enough mana upon the wind runner to do that one so far. Focus fire, sorry, I should say uh, fortification goes up, also starts doing that, which is why I got confused. But look at the barracks, it will go down very fast, I don't think they can do anything against that, unless they are scared of being caught out again, and it looks like they are. Barracks still alive, they tried to get something in return for that team fight, so far not getting it though, and now the Ravage is on cooldown, Tornado will still stop, Stun Hill still hits on the Lycan, Deafening Blast will make sure that Lina backs off. Trap is not hitting Evoker super fast with that Wex Max out. Wolves are gonna be uh, doing some harassment on the tier 3. Uh, he is uh, gonna be able to TP out though. Ooh, quite close. Uh, and let's see, uh, yeah, oh, this is an illusion. And Evoker will be back out again. So no heroes dying for uh, CNB apart from the... Apart from the Shadow Shaman who died before, you know, at the team fight with a 4 versus 1, some buybacks being forced out. Is this still flying? Yeah. Some buybacks being forced out. I mean, look at this one. There was a buyback on the TA. Actually, actually that's the only buybacks that was, uh, that was used right there. But they defend their barracks, which is probably only the only thing they wanted to do. And successfully so. Still quite low, but then again, it's a regen regenerating building. And, you know, they don't really care that much about it, about it as long as the lane gets pushed out continuously. And uh, <laughs> we're back to, to where we were before the team fight, because nobody took anything in return for the victories that they took, and we see we see the gold graph about zero, experience graph, big drop here as uh, Garage took a team fight, but, uh, took, uh, took Roshan as well, and then, you know, got killed off again, so it's really, it's... It, but it doesn't matter. It's it's not about it's not about those graphs anymore right now. Swiftly it is about defense. positioning, about chess. Okay, we're turning it into chess. So one one team makes a move, oh, and it is a cool story bear that's gonna make a move. It's gonna be slowed here. Is it gonna be a cold snap as well? No cold snap just yet. Parshot's going through. Shackle is not latching. Tornado goes through. Nature's attendant helping out, but it's still gonna be like on the pick up the last hit. And it's Alina that's gonna be able to back out with a ghost after there as well. And then Chance was there. Was the only one that didn't die in the previous team fight, and now she did die, so that is at least, uh, you know, keeping the score even. And it looks like uh, Sunstrike is going to help us some. Like, Legends on the Necronomicon uh, Warriors, they don't want to have that barrack going down. They just used everything to stop that, and, you know, it's not worth going in there. Winter on the meantime, picking up the tower on the t t tier 3 tower on the mid lane with focus fire. And Tidehunter is just waiting for a good time to blink in and rabbits, because that is what he wants to go for. Shadow Shaman War is being placed there. And it's gonna be set on the on the tier three tower. In the meantime, Rabbit's getting used here. 
Distra this is distraction, people. This is distraction. Lightning gets picked off. Nice shackle from the Windrunner, but they don't care. It is the barracks on the middle that is going to be the case. It's going to be going down. There's nothing they can do to stop it. There they go. Two set, one set of barracks gone. Two barracks in total. Shadow Shaman staying alive so far. Invoker backing out right now. Is a matter. Are you going to back up, be back out in time? Shadow Shaman has already gone. Vacuum back in from the Invoker. Ghost Scepter there as he tries to run away. Is he going to be in time? He is going to try to pop his, his invisibility, but will be in time? I'm not sure. No invisibility just yet. Now he goes invisible and he will be in time as well. There might still be a vacuum. Oh, run away from the Shiva's guard. Uh, yeah, Titan was still alive there as well. And giving up a Lycan for that cause is so worth it. It's so worth it. They get two set two barracks here. Well, they were just distracted on this bone lane. I mean, Titan to use this Ravage knowing that there wouldn't be anything useful being done with that fight, or at least no heroes would go down, but it's just distraction. <sighs> I do like this play. I do. I think I. I think I'm a fan. CNB proving to be a pretty solid team here. And maybe I'm just uh, just a noob not knowing uh, about that team before. And another pause. Okay, that is not really. I'm. I'm. I'm no longer a fan. There's just too many pauses in this game. Frozen. Yeah, we already saw that. We already saw that. We, we checked out the pings. We saw that he had 800 ping. But then again. Then again. Never stop playing. And Lena reconnecting. And Lena actually uh, dis. Oh. Oh! I didn't even know that Lena disconnected. But she did. And she uh, is back again. So that is Lena back up again. Oh, that is why he's pretty lagging. 3G connection. Of home. Wow. Good job for him. Titan just is continuing his farm. 13 on a gold up for him. And so now waiting just for all their cooldowns to be back off again. Some stray. Again, two and a half minutes too early. Gonna be the ancients being farmed here. 3700 gold up on the Templar Assassin. Side the vice up on the Windrunner. Invisibility. That will be useful. Every every hero is useful, I guess. Uh, every item, but then again. Side of vice, useful to sheep. This guy here. When he doesn't have his BKB on, of course. But he is the one that's doing most of the damage. He is the one that is uh, the one that they have to fight against. He is the one that has 4.1k gold. Wonder what he's gonna go for next. I mean... Maybe an MKB? The fusel blade up on the span. I do like that pick up. Just burning away the mana of his opponents. Definitely good, especially if you're up versus uh, two heroes, uh, or at least two heroes, that are pretty mana intensive, being the Tidehunter as well as the Shadow Shaman. Well, you can go the Invoker mana intensive as well, but then again, he's gonna be too fast for you to catch, I guess. Maybe, maybe not. Looks like bottom lane once again is gonna be the target for CMB. Uh, <laughs> Garage knows that though. They know that, and they're waiting for it, they're ready for it. Schultz Karaz ready on Lycanthrope. Oh, there's no buyback, but the Templar says to buy. Oh, no, you know, no, you don't, Dandy, no, you don't. I, I hope an MKB. I think an MKB. But there's a small voice inside of me saying. I might see that one. He has 1900 gold. Doesn't have buyback just yet. Almost complete, though. And uh, yeah, CNB doesn't want to go in without the advantage of maybe having killed off one hero before. Radiance top tower. Is Sorry, I have attack. a cold, which is why you hear me sniffing. I run in a pack. Like a throw illusions, run in a pack. Oh, He's gonna defend their tier three tower. I have to say, they're doing a good job of defending their tier twos. <laughs> I I said tier three, but I meant tier twos. Did a good job indeed. And is Roshan the back up again? I do think they are aware of that, but it's, it's going to be too fast, and Lycan was on, was on the way on the top lane, it's way too far away to do anything about that. Blink Dagger up on the Shadow Shaman. And it's going to be uh, the Roshan that's already down, so strike is going to be... Oh! No, it's not going to get the last hit. <laughs> that's close though, Templar Assassin picking up the Aegis. 
and the cheese goes to the spin and the cheese is on there, power shot up into the high ground, tornado as well, is not gonna catch, oh he's gonna catch the spin, oh spin, oh spin, close up there as well, pops the cheese instantly and there is the rest, stun hitting on Windrunner, Windrunner has to back up now but already goes down, Sven misses him, misses his master of madness, doing the works here as he still gets picked up by the invoker, tight under landing the rabbits in the meantime, definitely lands going through, Lena dies, Sven dies as well, Sunstrike is not gonna hit up on Kebab who is trying to get away but will not be able to do that. Tide Hunter in the meantime gets picked up by the Templar Assassin who is getting killed on the side. Where is she? There she is. It's this uh, Dark Seer that is going to get shackled here. It's going to get killed off by the Lycan. There we go. And it is the last one alive. It is Debney who indeed finished up an MKB. Okay. And it's going to be uh, they're gonna be the Barracks in return. And I don't know that Denny is here actually. He's going to go for Fuzzy. Whoa, look at that damage. Fuzzy pops his ghost after, that's why you have it. Denny is gonna go down, but has an Aegis. They focus on the barracks, they're not here for Denny, they're here for the barracks. They get the second set of barracks, and there's Denny back up, looking for a kill. Blinking after the Invoker, getting the Invoker as well. Blink away from the Shadow Shaman, making good use of his Blink deck, otherwise he would have definitely died. A Lycan is actually on his way out again, with a huge tail of creeps behind him. Popping his wolves and making sure that the, that the lanes are gonna continuously be pushed out. Using the wolves to, uh... Actually, go to the tier 3 tower on the top lane. Does he really want to go for that? Look at the damage. He might be able to do this. Look at that tower just dropping so fast with the Necronomicon there as well. Half HP. I mean, it not in, it's not entirely, but it is definitely a lot of damage being done there. Level 23 upon the Lycan. Let's take a look at the levels. Scroll back and let's take a look at the levels. Lycan throw BKB complete. An item that we normally see a bit earlier on the, t on the Lycan throw, but then again, he has not been able to uh, to die all that much, so he has been he's been doing good. Didn't really need it all that much. And it's a Templar Assassin that is the highest level in the game, level 25. And uh, level 23 on the Lycan throw, we just saw that with a level 12 on the Shadow Shaman. That is kind of sad, right? My experience graph is still in favor of the dire side. Gold graph still in favor slightly of the dire side, but I mean, I have to. S I, I said it too much anyway. I said it too much. I'm not going to say that again. It's just map control for uh, for the dire team taking stuff after team fights. Okay, I said it again. Illusion. Sue me. Sue me. And in the meantime, they're looking. They're waiting. They have the ravage in 12 seconds again. Waiting until uh, Garros Gaming makes their last desperate moves. They can get it. They got a team fight. They might get again. Barak in return is going to be whoa vacuum into uh, the well the dark sea or Venus. Like a throw, still kills off the Sven and Windrunner is the one that went down. We're going to see uh, dark sea taking a lot of damage, getting shackled, going down as well to the Invoker. The rest of Garros Gaming backing out three for one so far. Laguna Blade being used, not being able to kill off a hero though, even though she tried. Picks up uh, a ghost or ghost after helping out the Templar Assassin, killing off the Lycanthrope as Invoker is gonna still go down. That is why you have a ghost scepter and there's Alina and there's a lot of damage from spell damage. I mean, Lycanthrope going down in that in that encounter, pretty solid for a uh, play for uh, for Dendi as he's still alive, but still two heroes down, three for two, and again they are not getting anything in return. Uh, they can't kind of can't get anything in return because their tier four is kind of being harassed. Is it gonna be in time before the tier th four tower goes down? Yes. Okay. Because there's no siege creep here. Otherwise, it would have been tower going down. That is the risk of having two barracks down as soon as you leave your base. You can only leave it for a short amount of time. Sorry for messing up in that team fight, by the way. But it is late, and it is a lot of hours of casting. Uh, and that is uh, the case. And I have to say, I th I still think anything could happen. Even though if I have to pick a winner right now, it would of course be C and B. But, uh, yeah, I, I still think if, if, if Garage Gaming gets a good team fight, they might be able to go for a GG straight away. I mean, it is team fights that CMB is, is getting it around, mostly. And, of course, uh, picking off a hero or two, maybe, sometimes. But, one good team fight, and they, d they just have to kill off this tower and then go for the tier fours, might be able to do it. I've seen it being done before, so... And oh, I just want to have a comment that I am happy that there is no morphling and no anti mage in this game. Thank you. There, have it. They both got banned out. They should want you for the draft. Mask of madness, friend. Always fun. In the meantime, we should look at that one because buybacks are going to be important.
Uh, it looks like uh, Denny and Lina have uh, buyback though. Denny, of course, got to be the most important one. Denny who hasn't died in a while. 13 for two. Uh, as we just saw, he had a he had a dominating streak, I believe he had. And of course, last uh, set of barracks is on the top lane, so they want to go for that. Question is, if Garage is Garage going to back out, or do they just want to go for the tower? tower is under I mean, they have like TPs. They use the TPs. Radiant Not all though. Temper Assassin. Uh, She's gonna stay here. She doesn't have a TP. She's not gonna use it just yet. Radiant she wants to get that tier two tower. Mad at the tier two tower. There she goes. Radiant now she's TP. Gonna be stealing time. Or I hope at least for her. Deafening Blast going through Ravage there as well. And that is Dark. So you're already dead. BKB up on the spend. He's looking for a target. He finds a Lycan. But Lycan just put his eyes on the tower and just stared it down. Laguna Blade doesn't do that much. Lena on the back foot again. As uh, Shadow Shaman wants to go for a Shadow Shaman who's slightly out of position right now. But there again. There we have the uh, Ghost after That was the Dire Scourier somehow in the middle of all of that. And that is the buyback from the Lina because she was the one that had the buyback. Then he's trying to do something and get a tornado in the face though. There is a slow up on the Enchantress. Enchantress staying alive so far. Sunstrike is gonna hit her and that is Fuzzy picking up the kill there. Nice one, nice microwing or nice control I should say. Denny being turned into a piglet. It is Lena that still lands a sun on two. Saving Denny's life in fact with that. But their barracks already going down and the Mega Creeps are on the way. And that is indeed Mega Creeps for CNB. And we do see Lena dropping again. Denny staying alive but Denny is not gonna be able to do anything by himself. In the meantime Tier 4 Tower dropped as well. GG well played goes out. It is uh, the GG well play that goes out from C and B first, though. And that is something that we, d we're, that we call bad manners. But still, it is a GG because it is over for Garage Gaming. We see the end of the range for Garage Gaming. We see C and B Esports making it through to the finals. And they're going to face up against Quantic. So it's going to be a... A... What's it called? Oh, it's not really American because it's Brazilian versus American. Finals, because it's Quantic for his Brazilians. Anyway, we'll see. We'll see indeed. We are going to see uh, the end screen first, though. This was a match for 4PL. This was the semi-finals for the 4PL Cup number 10. If you want to show some support to 4PL, which you do, you go to facebook.com slash 4PL dot Dota 2, with the 2 just written down as a number, and uh, go like them there, please. My name is Shiver. I can be found on YouTube, youtube.com slash Shiver Gaming, and every other social thing that I have is also named under Shiver Gaming, so like Facebook and Twitter and stuff like that. Uh, we're going to see if the finals are still going to happen today. The finals is going to be best out of three. If it's going to happen today, it will be uh, now. Otherwise, it will be on Tuesday. We'll find out shortly, though. Stay tuned for maybe more Dota 2 action, or otherwise information of when there's going to be more Dota 2 action, which you want to know also, so stay tuned for that and don't go anywhere.